Let's start with the Federal Reserve and let me ask you whether you think the Fed's latest dovish pivot is setting them up for a policy mistake. Well, I think that's too early to tell. We don't know for sure. I think that they have, in my view, they've kind of overreacted in their dovish signals. I think there's reason for caution, reason for patience. But uh, the danger is, is sending forward guidance about how long that will last and how it will play out is, is, a, is a little tricky. And, and the, the, the danger that Fed often gets into in central banks is reacting to short-term events and, and then having to uh, fall back or uh, renege, if you will, on signals that they send. So it's a very touchy situation. I mean, I understand their patience, but I think they need to keep their options fairly open and not shut them down, perhaps as dramatically as at least the market seem to have, been, have to perceive them to do. Yes, and just to uh, get to the point that you've made about reacting to short-term events, that brings me on uh, to the theory uh, on real business cycles that you pioneered. Is that theory still relevant to today's circumstances? Well, of course it is. I mean, there are lots of shocks that occur to economies and the world economy and to domestic economies that have nothing to do with monetary policy. They have nothing to do with things that monetary policy can fix. Uh, I, I believe that we have to take a broader view, and I'm, I tend to be worried, and I said this when I was a, uh, at the Fed and still believe it, is that we, we put too much faith uh, and confidence in central banks to solve our economic challenges that we face, both in Europe and around the world, and certainly in the United States. And I think we have to be a little more, uh, I guess the word is, uh, realistic about what central banks can do. So I think we have to be careful about uh, taking on too much, if you will, and hoping that central banks can solve our problems when, in fact, they may be unrelated to things that central banks can actually deal with. Structural problems, labor market problems, uh, real problems in trade. They're just, they're, they're limited, limited ability to solve a lot of our problems. If the Fed were to react to what the market is pricing right now, which is the next move from the Fed being a cut, but also the signal that we're seeing from the inversion of the three-month 10-year yield curve, signaling perhaps that a recession is on the horizon, if the Fed was to follow those market signals and cut, would that be a mistake? Well, certainly at this date, I would... I would I would, just, I would say yes. I don't think that would be a wise thing to do. I think the sig signals are far from clear. Uh, I think there is uncertainty. I believe that, um, uh, that, for example, in the United States, a lot of the prognostications, if you will, from the markets about U.S. companies' earnings performance and so forth that we heard in the fall and December and worries, that those have not been nearly as bad or nearly as traumatic as the, as the markets were making them out to be, at least so far. So I think we have to be a little, little cautious in reacting to these short-term short -term decisions. I think Mary Daly, in the previous clip you played before the interview, that lots of things go on to determine long-term rates that uh, are beyond the control of the Fed. Greenspan once said, you know, we may be able to control short-term rates, but we certainly can't control long-term rates. Um, I think that um, we just have to be cautious in reading too much and, again, again these short-term these short-term signals. The Fed needs to focus on the medium to longer term, and that's where they should keep their focus and not be distracted by noise uh, in and around the marketplace. Yes, and as you've said that we may be putting too much faith in the ability of central banks to solve problems, I've got to ask you what your view is on modern monetary theory. <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, I, I guess the, the short answer is not much. <laughs> uh, I think it is, it is, it is a dangerous uh, uh, prescription. Uh, it is a belief somehow that, that central banks have a role in solving fiscal crises and fiscal problems. Uh, the role of an independent central bank and the desire and the, and the uh, uh, wisdom to sort of keep central banks independent of fiscal policy decisions is, is a good one. And this is just running headlong into that and risk undermining the independence of central banks around the world to the extent that we buy into this sort of notion that the Fed or the ECB has to fund fiscal policy actions. It's really quite troubling in my view. 
Let's talk about the ECB then, Charles. You, of course, are at the ECB and its Watchers Conference. Has the ECB missed its chance to normalise before the next downturn? Well, I don't know the answer to that, and I don't know that anybody does. Uh, I think that there is a risk, and I've been worried about this for years, that um, the sort of extraordinary actions and unconventional policy that the Fed and its central banks have taken during this crisis have been, um, uh, have been around too long, if you will. And I think we have to be careful that they don't become permanent. And I think that has a lots of risk to it, to our institutions and to our ability to respond in the future if need be. So I, I think that um, I don't know when the next recession will come, probably will at some point, but uh, we're not very good at forecasting them. And I think the best advice is to sort of be prepared and um, put yourselves in a position that allows you to react if and when it's necessary. You've talked about the ability of central banks to react in future. Have negative interest rates been worth it? I think that's a, that's a question who the jury is still out on. I think clearly Switzerland, Sweden, some other countries have sort of tried to implement negative interest rates, um, uh, partly as a way of getting around the issue of quantitative easing and the balance sheet problems that that leads to. Um, but I think the, the evidence is sort of mixed on that. Sometimes people seem to think it has effects sort of in the money markets in the short term uh, in, for large investors and for the financial sector. But in most, most cases, the negative interest rates have not filtered through to consumers very much, is my understanding. And I think the evidence is kind of mixed on that. So whether or not the negative interest yes. rates really promote uh, demand, as monetary policy would want to do, I think that's less than... The evidence is less than overwhelming.